Did I make an impression, Ken? You did all right. I wanted so much to do the right thing. I know. But I felt so... so left out. That can happen to anybody. Ken, are they all like Fran? Intellectuals, you mean? No snobs. You're imagining that, Winnie. You'll get used to them. It'll take time. To get elevated to her level, is that what you mean? Ken, how can you sit there and be so superior? Don't I count? Of course you do, Winnie. But you can't expect me to give up Fran and Pete. They're my kind of people. I'd hope that we'd be like them. Well, I don't want to be like her. But what's the matter with Fran and Pete? Ken, I think you better take me home. If that's what you want, sure. Why not? Look, darling, hasn't this gone a little too far? It certainly has. But you can't expect me to be any different from what I am. Don't you expect to change, even a little? After all, I've been giving up everything in the world for you. But what if I don't write that novel? Ken, you don't seem to realize yourself how good you are. No wonder Peter's... But I've never had anything published. You're being unfair. Why? Because I want you to be famous. Ken, you don't realize how exciting a writer's life can be. There's no greater thrill in the world. Can't you be just a college professor's wife? Isn't that enough? And play goes to your Hamlet. Oh, no, I'm not going to sit at home with the four walls and count pennies or alter myself to suit your friend's taste. Winnie, I love you. And I love you, Ken. But I'm not going to let you change me. You're not going to change me either. I've got to feel free to be myself even after we're married. Well, that goes for me, too. He was in one of those moods again, and late as usual. But he was very popular and nobody minded, of course. He liked to hold his class outdoors when the weather was nice. He called it Folk Origins of American Poetry. But Lit 131 was more than that, really, much more. He had read a lot and traveled widely and was a brilliant lecturer. But he was too easygoing. There was no discipline at all. He was so informal and so impersonal, I didn't think he could belong to anyone. He used to invite me up to his room once in a while. I could never figure out his game. He enjoyed things much more than he enjoyed making something of himself. He liked to talk about the folklore of the country people, the ballad singers and the musical instruments. He took pleasure in new values and ideas, and especially he liked the feeling of a university wall around him. He never was called on to make any practical decisions. He could go on thinking and dreaming and doing as he pleased. He left early one morning. Later I heard he went on a field trip with Professor Gates. He was gone for days. He made sure it was way out where no one at all could reach him. His words were few, but his love they will linger forevermore. The smile in his sad dark eyes, more tender than words could be. But I was nothing to him, though he was the world. Today and there in his garden strolled All robed in her satins and lace Lady Mary so strange and cold Who held in his heart no place I couldn't stand it any longer, Ken. Who told you that I was here? I had to come back to you. I wouldn't have known a moment's peace all my life. 
But this is a hundred miles from nowhere. I kept thinking about you all the time. I couldn't sleep. It wasn't easy for me either. Ken, we've got a chance to be happy. Let's not throw it away. Are you sure? I don't want to be sure of anything except that you love me. But I was nothing to him Though he was the world to me Today in his palace grand On his flower-strewn bed Ken, put your arms around me. Oh, Ken, I want so to feel, I don't know, together again the way we were. You're so lovely, Winnie. For every woman in this world, Ken, there's only one man. So enchanting. When you marry for love, Ken, you're always happy. So seductive. Are you going to be nice again, Ken? You'll see now. And you'll be an angel about everything. Always. And we'll never disagree about anything at all. Never. And you won't forget my birthday? June 26th. <laughs> <laughs> and promise you won't take me for granted. I promise. And you'll never get fat and bald. <laughs> never. And we'll always be in love, even when we're old. Always. Kiss? To what, Ken? What to? You say. To love. Good looking, healthy, clever. A beautiful bride. She thinks she's in love with Ken. Intelligent, gifted, certainly old enough to get married, to know his own mind. He thinks he's in love with Winnie. He likes her vivaciousness, but he doesn't realize it can't be bottled up and controlled. She likes his air of distinction, but she wants him to accept her taste. He likes her simplicity, but he wants her to be sophisticated and understand his complexities at the same time. She likes his romantic moodiness, but she wants him to be a steady provider, too. He likes her maternal qualities, but is not prepared to give up his freedom to really enjoy them. He likes her efficient practicality, but he doesn't want to have his wings clipped so he is down to earth along with her. She likes the idea of going to live with him in a new community. But she wants the people there to be like her own neighbors. She likes almost everything she knows about him. But lots of what she knows is in her own imagination. He's willing to promise the world, but he is probably unable to give even himself. What a lovely picture this bride and groom make. They might have found each other but instead they remain strangers. Each is a dream in the other's mind. They don't want to accept each other as they really are. They would rather change each other to satisfy their own ambitions. That's why they are doomed to fail. Mm -hmm.